Hey YouTube, uh, it's Jordy's Basement coming at you on a Sunday, a rainy Sunday in February. And um, I wanted to make a video showing some new finds, but something happened this week uh, that sort of led me to think about something else. And sort of down the line, all of a sudden I end up at this topic that uh, I thought was a perfect time to talk about. And that's this subject of grails. Um, you know, I've been watching vinyl community videos for a long time. Never officially become a member of the vinyl community, I don't think anyway, um, just for a variety of reasons. Uh, and one of which is this, I, I see a lot of people talking about their grails. And most people have a grail and they define it as being an album that they've been searching for, for quite some time. Maybe it's too pricey, maybe it's an, a, an original copy or original pressing, or uh, maybe it's a condition issue. They want it in perfect condition, it's gotta be you know, E, V, G, excellent, whatever that whole scale is. See, that's that's part of the reason why I'm not, I don't feel like I quite belong in the VC because I, I don't really care what condition it's in. Um, well, I care as long as it plays on the system um, and it's not completely beat up. Um, I don't ever search for upgrade copies of things. I'm not, you know, in the record store examining every corner of the album cover, um, you know, looking at the vinyl too closely. I give it a quick glance, and if I, I like it and I like the music, I'm going to pick it up. And it stays in my collection, and I'm happy to have it. So I don't, I'm not a collector, as I, I guess I would say. Uh, does that make sense? Anyways, uh, one of the things that uh, the VC people do we'll talk about a lot is this grail thing. You know, they want these these hard to find items and, and things that they've been looking for for a long time. And I always thought, I don't have any of those. And that's another reason why I thought maybe the VC wouldn't be happy to have me as a member. Uh, because I don't, there's nothing that I, I want so badly that I'm always on the search for it. I don't have want lists. Um, I just go out and, and buy records. Um, but however, that changed this week. And that's why I'm here making this video. Um, all of a sudden, I can honestly say that I have what I would consider to be a grail. And I never knew that it was. But I realized a lot and learned a lot from this experience. So <clears throat> allow me to wax poetic for a moment and give you a quick story. So my favorite musician on the planet these days is Neil Morse. And some of you may know who Neil is. Uh, if His name is in the title of this video, so if you clicked on it because of that, obviously you know who Neil is. But Neil is huge in the world of progressive rock, which is my preferred genre. Um, and Neil was a founder and uh, frontman for a band called Box Beard for a long time uh, in the mid-90s in that second generation of progressive rock uh, in, like I said, mid-90s or so. And Box Beard really took off uh, until 2002, uh, we can talk about Spock's in another video, but uh, Neil left the band in 2002 and went and did his solo thing. And he's been a member of several bands like Flying Colors and Transatlantic uh, and also uh, his solo thing, which is under Neil Morris and now the Neil Morris Band. In any case, follow the bouncing ball. He's been very prolif prolific and he's made a lot of music and it's phenomenal. And he's a multi-instrumentalist, musical genius, and quite honestly, in my opinion, the best songwriter of the last 30 years. Um, so that's so that gives you a little bit of perspective on Neil. Now I've seen him several times as part of uh, different bands he's been in, um, but I've never seen him uh, solo acoustic the way I saw him this week, which is where where this is going. Uh, in any case, about t uh, two months ago, I pre-ordered his new album, Life in Times, which is a, a which is a singer songwriter type of an album. It's not a prog rock album by any means. Uh, he does this now and again. He releases these collections of just him and an acoustic guitar or maybe a light band pop music, but um, more singer-songwriter oriented. In any case, if you know Neil, again, you, you knew the album was coming, and I pre-ordered the album through Radiant Records, which is his, his record label. Um, any case, I, I waited, and finally, uh, about, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, this small package arrived at my door. It was the new album, Life and Times, but it was on the wrong format. It was the CD. I was bummed. Happy to have it, but bummed. That's not what I ordered, even though the receipt said vinyl, it arrived on CD. So I went, uh, got on the computer and I wrote to Radiant Records and I said I got the wrong, the wrong format, but I didn't hear back. And I've done that several times with no response. And I thought maybe, okay, they're on the road, uh, just starting a tour. He probably won't respond right away. So um, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, wait a couple days and try again. Well, this week, uh, just two or three days ago, I had tickets to see him in Sellersville, PA, which is about an hour and 20 minutes that way. Uh, to go see him at this small theater called the Sellersville Theater 
If you've ever been there, you know that it's con a converted movie theater. Uh, seats, I don't know, 400 people maybe? There was about 300 there. Um, and while I was there, I there was, there was a merch table and they were selling the album on vinyl. And my wife who was with me, who's also a Neil Morris fan, said, uh, you know, push me to get it. Why don't you just get it and you can go home and return the CD. They'll give you a refund. You can exchange it for something else. That way you'll have the album now. So I thought about it. We went to the show, um, watched the, the show. was just amazing. Mike Portnoy showed up. Um, in my opinion, the best drummer in the world uh, showed up because that's his hometown. Uh, we're nearby his hometown anyway. So he was out on stage with Neil. You can see the videos on, on YouTube. And 300 of us just enjoying it. It was just a magical show. Phenomenal. But after the show, I went to the merch table, and like I said, my wife said, you know, why don't you push, to, push me to buy the, the vinyl? And so I did. I picked it up. There it is. Um, Life and Times. Really good record. Um, in any case, I, as I was leaving, and this is, this is all going somewhere, I promise. As I was leaving to walk away from the merch table, I literally chest bumped with the man himself, Neil Morse. Bumped right into me as he was headed to the merch table to meet and greet the people and sign items and what have you. So that was pretty cool. I had met Neil once before, way back, uh, at probably 2005 or four or something. Very briefly after a show, we shook hands and moved on. But I never got a chance to you know, have him sign anything or take pictures with him and, and things. So uh, sure enough, I turned around and I, this thing was in the shrink wrap. I took off the shrink and voila, I had him sign the back of it. Uh, I, I think I even asked him, Neil, would you mind signing my album? <laughs> uh, duh. Uh, you know, you, you could get. I'm not. I'm not a guy who's starstruck. You know, very much. Um, but I'll tell you, because I, I, you know, I walk by Neil Morris, and you know, it's like, hey, there's Neil. I don't want to bother him. But when you get to talk to people who are like your uh, your grails, your idols, um, your heroes, you just uh, who knows what comes out of your mouth. So I, I think I asked him to sign my album, and I don't know. I asked him how the weather was. Who the heck knows? Um, but yeah, to Jordan, Neil Morse. So my name really isn't Jordy. I know it's hard to believe you all thought it was Jordy and Jordan. Uh, with an exclamation point. Uh, really, really, really very cool. And uh, I'm just really happy to, to have this now. And it got me thinking as I was driving home, back to the, 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 the reason I'm making this video. Now I know what a grail really is for me. I spent $30 on this, I wouldn't sell it for $30,000. Does that make sense, right? That, that's a grail to me. Um, nobody else has a copy that says this. It's a one of one, um, but it's so, it means so much and it's so personal to me that whether or not, you know, it's, it's not hard to find. And actually, it's funny because this particular version of the album, I saved this little hype sticker, um, is numbered, there's only 120 of these white vinyls on the planet. And this is number 44. So the, the one that I ordered through the mail order was black vinyl. So now I have a white one. The black one probably will never come. I'll probably exchange it for something else. But this becomes, in my opinion, a grail. I now know what the grail is. The, and by the way, the, the packaging on this thing is really cool. I don't know if you're into colored vinyl at all, but that's really, really nice. Two different stickers. Very nice. So, there you go. Jordy's basement has a grail. Never knew I even had one before. Never knew one existed. But there you go. Now I do. Neil Morse, Life and Times. Anyways, if you're not familiar with Neil's music, if you've not heard it, there's a lot of it. Uh, if you're a prog guy, or even if you're not a prog guy, pick up, oh my gosh, where do you start? We'll have to do a video on this, but maybe a Spock's Beard 5, Roman numeral 5, V. Or uh, Spock's Beard Snow album would be a good place to start. And listen to it straight through. You'll thank me later. Down in the comments, maybe. All right, uh, that's all for now. We're going to show some finds um, in a later video, maybe uh, today or tomorrow. Um, until then, thank you very much for listening. Take care.